Welcome to The Warehouse. Have you ever heard a sermon and thought, how in the world did he discover that? Or where did he get that idea? Every week at Cornerstone Church, two teams dig into the biblical text that will be taught during our weekend services. We spend hours talking about the text, the context, the culture of the time, you name it. But you can't stuff all that into a 30-minute message. That's where we come in. We're going to show you the stuff in the warehouse that didn't make it to the stage. Well, hey, welcome to the warehouse. Uh, glad you're joining us today. Today, I'm joined by Stephanie, per usual. Whoop, whoop. That's Stephanie right there. And then I'm joined by someone else who uh, has never been on the warehouse podcast before, our beloved lead pastor, Michael Nave. I was going to... That is a really weird introduction. <laughs> I was actually going to set it up with somebody you may know and love. Okay. Because, you know. Was I too much? No, no. Okay. Overhyped? We, <laughs> no. We do love him and we, he's we know beloved. him. beloved. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Welcome. If you, if you Thank you. <laughs> consider him beloved, send us an email. <laughs> if not. Yeah. So today, uh, you know that we always kick off with an icebreaker. So Stephanie, I, I put her in charge of picking out our icebreaker nice. for today. Uh-huh. What you got? What is your hidden talent? You may have multiple, but if you were to choose one hidden talent, what would yeah. you say it is? Yeah. Is she choosing that because she has one she wants to share about her? I sure hope so. I actually don't know the answer to that. Okay. I mean, <laughs> most people do know this about me, but I have done many pathways through like schools and trying to figure out like what I want to mm. be when I grow mm. up. So I have a cosmetology license, nice. my phlebotomy, so I can draw blood. Ugh. I can start an IV <laughs> as another thing. <laughs> So I, but I'm glad I've landed here. So that's my Me talent. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Top that's that. awesome. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> like mine seems lame in comparison. No. Uh, because so my, my hidden talent that many of you might not know is uh, that I have absurd ankle mobility. So my ankles are just very, very flexible. Is that a talent? Or I don't more know. Like a, it's just a, I don't know. Thing? I yeah. mean... No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we can go <laughs> so with I, it. So we discovered this, like Dustin was doing some an exercise back in the green room and just like seeing how like flexible his ankles were that where you like kneel down and you put your, you put your knees against the wall and you see how low you can go mm. and how far out your feet can be from the wall and still do it. And like we were doing it and mine was like, my ankles were far more flexible than anyone else back there. Mm. And so now like if I do, yeah. Squats or lunges or anything. For the next five minutes, there will be silence while we compete against the wall <laughs> yes. to find out who's. Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and fast forward five minutes. We'll be back with the results. <laughs> uh, a, a fun little one would be I, I can wiggle my ears. Ooh. I've Googled that. I think it's a 10% of the population. Nice. Kind okay. of thing. Okay. Um, a fun, fun fact real talent would be uh, a guy named. Gail taught me how to cut in paint, mm-hmm. and then another friend uh, named Randy taught me how to roll. I really enjoy a good paint job. Yes. Wow. So I actually got to be the beneficiary of that whenever we were yes. working on this building. Yes. I remember being here late with you, like in, in a lift while everybody, like we just had so many volunteers here, like doing stuff. It was a really it was fun good. time. A great season. <laughs> Tia was pregnant with Silas at the time. Like I remember her climbing a ladder to get up into the tech booth and stuff <laughs> with her big old pregnant belly. It was yes. funny. Anyway, but yeah, you taught me how to paint. And since then I've painted like every house I've owned. <laughs> So so fun. I, I I really do enjoy being able to paint um, and make it look nice. Yes. Because I had some good mentors mm-hmm. along the way. Mm-hmm. Awesome to see you yeah. taking it further. There we go. I and would not say I, I'm... Uh-huh. I was going to say, and I'm a horrible painter. Are so, you really? I mean, I've gotten better, but yeah, it's it's not great. It's that kind of surprises great. me. Yeah. Well, mm. I've gotten better because of Cassie Graven. She kind of has helped yeah. me with mm. the... She's real good. She's too. really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... Sweet. Well, today we're doing kind of a one-off episode. This is, um, again, it's going to be like sitting in the same space as our warehouse podcast, because one of the things we talk about on uh, the reason we do this podcast is because there's a whole lot of stuff that we talk about um, in ministry philosophy and preparation for a sermon and just like why we do what we do that like that never makes it to the stage Mm -hmm. because we only have a limited amount of time. You know, you've got 30 to 35 minutes up there with people. Whenever we're talking about vision and stuff, it's like we can only say so much at a a time. But today we're going to talk specifically about follow, Mm -hmm. uh, this this philosophy for making disciples and what that looks like. And it's been like, 
I don't know. I've gotten to be on this journey for part of it with you. And mm-hmm. then I know it's been a big deal for you for even longer than that. So today, Warehouse, we're talking about what's the stuff about follow that like might be behind the scenes a little bit, maybe sitting in the warehouse. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Where should we begin? How long ago? Like, so let's let's think about this. You've been visioning and dreaming about this for many years, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how long would you say you've been dreaming about it for? I would say 18 years. 18. Wow. So 2005, I quit my job Okay. Um, because it was just off and mm. I didn't know how to fix it. Um, so in 2005, I was pastoring a church in Indiana and I r- was confronted with the reality that though we had had success mm-hmm. at attracting more people to a church yeah. service, we were not making disciples. Mm. And I remember the time when I was reading through the gospels, just kind of enjoying watching the life and teaching of Jesus and realizing very little of what I was doing as a Mm -hmm. spiritual shepherd looked anything like what Jesus was doing Mm -hmm. as a spiritual shepherd. And very little of the people in my church were looking like the disciples Mm -hmm. post-Pentecost, you know, when when they came alive and gave their lives to that. And ultimately, I I, I quit my job realizing I didn't know how to turn the ship. I did not know how to turn that church into a disciple-making church, I honestly did not know what to do. Headed off to Phoenix to plant a church, and I was confronted again with the reality, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we can add some purpose to some of these functions, but... We're, I, I, I don't even mm-hmm. know how to actually make disciples as the main mm-hmm. function of the church. Yeah, yeah you've, you've, uh, there's some kind of funny name for like whenever people, whenever most pastors think about like success metrics, there's like butts and pews. What's, what's, the, there's like three numbers that people, oh, is it the ABCs? Yeah. Attendance, buildings, cash. Okay. Yeah. 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 The That's ABCs. Was, yeah. ABCs that most people are thinking about whenever they're thinking about success for a church. I think there's three Bs, butts, budgets. Buildings, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. I think that okay. maybe the three yeah. Bs that yeah. you talked about. I just thought it was kind of funny. Yes, yeah. So it is. It is wild to think how many like churches that that's what they're looking at, and how. I mean, I, I've been there before. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's really easy metrics to look at. So then, like, whenever you started, whenever you got a little bit further down the road, like, what mm-hmm. were a couple like what things clicked started to mm-hmm. click for you about what the church should be doing? Mm-hmm. So al- along the way, uh, you would remember, and and, mm-hmm. and our people here at, at Cornerstone would remember a, a season of doing Pathway. Mm-hmm. And so Pathway was an attempt at taking a model and adjusting it. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, okay, we just need to adjust some things and and then we'll get there. Mm-hmm. So we, we built out Pathway, come, connect, serve, grow, go. And like, hey, here are the five that that will get us there. Uh, we did Disciple You uh, way back yep. at Bainbridge like early on, just thinking, okay, okay, we got to teach our people to be disciplers. We got to teach our people to be disciples. We really focused in on parenting, even yeah, like right, how right. do you how do you hand this down to your kids? And and I would say just yeah, for eighteen years, it's just been like, okay, here are these different components, and I know mm-hmm. it's not this, mm-hmm. and how do we tweak that? And and you you and I, Nathan, mm-hmm. have read many books yeah, along yeah. the way, and. And, and to be honest, they all just kind of start sounding really similar mm-hmm. yeah. where it's go make disciples, uh, yeah. now go do it. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. And there's right? always something missing with it. Yes. It's like leaves you with a little bit of a, like just a, a hole there. It's like you read it. So many of those I've read it. And like at, at a certain point in the book, I'm like, oh, this is kind of exciting. This mm-hmm. one might work. And mm-hmm. then by the time I get done, I'm like, it's not quite there. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So w- you you've had some phrases that you've used before about like, the way we tend to think of it, like uh, we think of it like curriculum or wh- what are the words mm, that you use about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For those churches who realize, hey, we're not making disciples, mm-hmm. uh, we usually jump to uh, one of three or four different approaches. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, let's make it instruction. Yeah. And that's kind of historical, maybe uh, in, in our... Yes, kind yes, of yes. Stuff, yeah. All of those. And like, even in Baptist traditions, there was the discipleship training hour. Mm-hmm. One of the churches I once interviewed back in my seminary days, they had like four o'clock yeah. DTS, mm-hmm. and then, you know, like a five or six o'clock evening service and all of that. So one way would be to approach it in, we need to instruct, yeah. teach people these things, and then they'll be disciples. Right. That's definitely where my... That's definitely my bent. Like, yes. <laughs> if you put, just put me... In a space, I'm just like, okay, we're going to read this book, right. that book, and you're going to listen to that sermon. And we're going to get to get together and talk about what you learned. Right. And, and there's an aspect of that sure. that is right yeah. in the Great Commission. Teach them 
to observe what mm-hmm. I have commanded mm-hmm. you. So there's an aspect of it's missing. It's not just head knowledge. Yeah. It's right. knowledge in action. Yeah. But some churches would say, okay, we got to make disciples, so let's instruct them. Others would add an intensive. Like, hey, we're not getting it done in the regular schedule, Mm -hmm. so we're going to add a disciple-making ministry, and it's going to be an intensive process, maybe 12 weeks, maybe 12 months, maybe three years, and you're going to go through it, and then you're going to graduate. And the reality is, hey, following Jesus is intense, Mm -hmm. but you don't graduate from Mm -hmm. it. It's not that we're done, and now I've got the badge, mm-hmm. and I go do that. There there has to be an aspect of continuing on mm-hmm. in that journey. And then I think another one that's become really popular recently is what I would call kind of the intuitive way. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to meet for coffee, and yeah. we're just going to talk, and maybe we'll read a book. Maybe we'll study the Bible. We're just yeah. going to talk about life. And and that is really good in that making disciples is highly relational. Mm-hmm. Yes. No technology, no pr- program makes disciples. Right. Disciples make right. disciples. Right. But, but the problem with that or the weakness of the intuitive approach is if you don't have a guidance, a, a structure, you just yeah. default to your faves or yeah. you yeah, know yeah, what right, you right, most right. want to talk about or what you're comfortable with. And then we don't have a holistic approach to the yeah. way of following Jesus. Uh, yeah. I, I, whenever you're talking about that, I think about we have that same kind of conversation whenever we're, we're thinking about worship services and stuff. It's like, there's the people out there that just think like, oh, it just needs to be led by the Holy Spirit and stuff. Mm-hmm. So like throw out the, like, you shouldn't be planning what songs you're going to do or what you're yeah. like, just get up there and talk about whatever God lays on your heart. It's like, no, they're there needs to be structure. God's a God of order, not of chaos. Mm -hmm. And he gives us his Holy Spirit that gives us like the wisdom and when to depart from that and when to do. So it's like, I kind of lean that way with when we're thinking the intuitive aspect of it's like, yeah, absolutely lean on the Holy Spirit, but have a plan. Mm Right. Yeah. So that's cool. And and so as we began to think through, okay, all right. So making disciples and, and as we've just, I would say, beat our head on that wall mm-hmm. of like, okay, what is the trellis that provides mm-hmm. the structure yep. that God can grow that the vine, vine yeah. uh, us being mm-hmm. connected to Jesus? One of the things we really settled in on is recognizing, hey, the fruit mm-hmm. of being a disciple is fruit of the Spirit. Right, right. right. Like you you will know a tree by its fruit. Mm-hmm. And, and so the win has to be developing the character of Jesus mm-hmm. uh, as as Paul illustrates in Galatians 5. Like, this is the fruit yep. of the Spirit. The, and again, it's singular, fruit singular. This right. is mm-hmm. the package deal with these nine aspects yep. of looking more and more like Jesus. The challenge in that is it's a, in what they call in the business world, a lag measure. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know till it's harvest time. You don't right. know until the fruit develops. It doesn't really give you guidance in what the input mm-hmm. is. And what the input in Galatians 5 is walk in the Spirit, mm-hmm. be led by the Spirit, you know, be guided, you know, be, be carried along yep. by the power of the Spirit. So then the question, became okay what what is that mm-hmm. like how do i walk in the spirit how yeah. do i set up my life to sacrifice the desires of the flesh and see the fruit of yeah. the spirit grow in my life and what we know is that there are many historical disciplines we call them the spiritual disciplines that people have used and mm-hmm. i i've come up with a list of 20 Mm-hmm. That you know, over the last couple thousand years, Christians have found yep. to be beneficial, and so we've, we've kind of laid those out side by side. And, okay, solitude, fasting, prayer, Bible yeah. study, mm-hmm. Bible reading, Bible memorization. You know, what are these things that Christians have have done? And so we had been on a hunt for a long time to say, okay, what are the inputs? Yeah, mm-hmm. what does it look like to walk? In the spirit, what does right. it look like to align my life in the way that the spirit then is mm-hmm. free to bring the fruit that is the win, the harvest, the joy mm-hmm. of of seeing the character of Jesus developed in me, mm-hmm. and and along the way, uh, in our time of studying Jesus great commandments when he was asked, hey, what's 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 top of the list? Right. He said, I'll tell you, yeah. the first and greatest yeah, is yeah. love God. And he mm-hmm. quotes the Shema, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, mm-hmm. soul, and strength. And then the second is linked or tied to it, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. And as we looked through that, we began to realize, hey, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus is framing up this whole disciple making thing in a way that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. What if Jesus is defining how to walk in the spirit in a really helpful way? And what I realized is that, that, that I've heard a lot of churches say the three big things to do is love God, love people, make disciples. Mm -hmm. And some have even said, 
the great commandment with the great commission makes a great church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet, really, when you put those three together as a list, it it actually separates it in a way we Mm. shouldn't, because loving God, loving people, that's being a disciple. And the ones who were following Jesus, when he left, were told, okay, now go do what I did to you. Go do to others what I did to you. So it's not love God, love people, make disciples. Uh, It's it's really this journey of be a disciple. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're being a disciple, go make disciples. And so as as I look at the Great Commission, I don't see love God, love people, make disciples. I see love God, Mm -hmm. so you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so we've started using the up, out, in. Mm -hmm. Love God, up. Like, what are the things you do in your expression of devotion, aligning yourself to your relationship with God out? What are, what are the ways that we actually do love people? And then how is it that I love others as I love myself? And we all know that Jesus wasn't teaching self-love. What, what he was teaching was taking responsibility for mm-hmm. the lives that we have, made in the image of God, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we one day stand before God to give an account for our salvation, yeah. for what we did with what he yeah. has given us. And so that's really added some, for us, some really beautiful framework of prioritizing these practices mm-hmm. that set us in a place where we are then walking with mm-hmm. the Spirit in a way that he brings fruit in our lives. So two questions. When did this click for you? Like, if you were to put a time marker on it, how long ago did this finally click? All these 18 years of trying to make this into a thing, mm-hmm. what time marker would you say? And was it like a, oh, I've got it? Or was it a still a process of like, okay, God, you're revealing this. I see this. And, you know, what did that look like for you? And then second question, list the nine. Well, it's not a question. It's like a list the nine. <laughs> <laughs> name them. It's an and assignment. Name them now. An assignment, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so when when did it click? It's 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 so interesting to to think about that because there have been mm-hmm. some aha moments, yeah, and yet never was it a night where I woke up in the morning <laughs> right and like, the night, oh, like oh, yeah, 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 here yeah. here it is. It, 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 some real significant breakthroughs, and yet just continuing to build on this foundation. So there was a big aha uh, a couple years ago, uh, not not an epiphany as in the whole plan laid yeah, out, yeah. but in a Oh, wow. When we disciple, we disciple people to fruit. Like that is the win, is the is the the development and the display of the character of Jesus described in Galatians 5 as this mm-hmm. fruit of the Spirit. And then we disciple people to fruit through practices. So how, how do we how do we align? And so a couple of years mm-hmm. ago, we worked really hard yeah. to define each aspect of the fruit, mm-hmm. and actually to be able to help people self um, what would you say assess? Yeah, yeah. self assess themselves according to that list with biblical definition. Mm-hmm. So to fruit, and then through practices and working through and it, it's just interesting to see how all these pieces came together there was actually this 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 thing that the Lord put on my heart uh, of being self-aware mm-hmm. self-disciplined self-development mm-hmm. like I really sense that God gave me a passion to mm-hmm. help people uh, recognize who God created them to be and how how to step into that that was our full potential series yes right? yeah. okay yeah. yes and so e- then suddenly, and and I think Nathan, you remember that conversation of I realized, whoa, that's one of the missing yeah. pieces uh-huh. when people approach disciple making because we're not teaching disciples yeah. how to self assess mm-hmm. and 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 form guardrails and and then to do self development. And so that piece mm-hmm. was like, oh, wait a minute, that forms a, a missing aspect of that. So two fruit through practices, then recognizing uh, these practices coming together. And so then once we had those nine, we then went into the process of developing self-assessments yep. uh, for each mm-hmm. of those practices. So again, people mm-hmm. could do a self-assessment and say, oh, yeah, of the practice of uh, here's where I'm at yeah. in that journey. So each time, yes, it's gotten really intense in the last two years. Okay. As two or three pieces have really come together, fruit, 
practices, this third aspect of as you love yourself, mm -hmm. taking ownership of the life that God has given you and Jesus secured for you on the cross, um, those were two really significant pieces that developed philosophically. And then we've come along in the last year talking about how do mm -hmm. we support that technologically, not to create a program mm -hmm. that makes disciples, but actually comes alongside that whole intuition. Give a tool. Yeah, yeah, give a tool to help people who really want to help others follow in the way of Jesus. Yeah. So one of the things you said is like people sh kind of struggle, I guess you would say, to assess themselves. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Mm. Wow. That is so good. Um Golly, I'd love for us to to discuss that a minute. It's a sure. great question in that um, we, we can so easily kind of just get caught in the checklist of things. Mm -hmm. Hey, I went to church. Yeah. I signed up for a small group. Hey, I volunteer once in a while and never stop to ask the question, wow, why is it that every time that happens, it sets me mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. triggers, pulls me back in? Why am I so prone to that attitude, that sin, that temptation? Um, and so we we just kind of get caught up in the weekly schedule. I did church, you know, mm -hmm. I did this, mm -hmm. and we we fail to stop and 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 look. Uh, honest assessment has become yeah. one of my biggest passions of helping people honestly assess where they are, because until you're willing to be honest before the Lord, right. you can't be saved. You know, Until you're willing to be honest before the Lord, you can't discover those areas that need improvement, that do have weaknesses. Um, I think it scares us yeah. to honestly assess where where we're at. Yeah. And so, yeah, we can quickly, oh, confess sin, take communion, right. pray a prayer, and and yet to stop and and genuinely uh, take a look at where we are is um, mm -hmm. is really difficult. Yeah. What would you guys add? What, why do you think it's hard for I, people? I think that's a I think that's a great answer. And and I'm thinking about like um, <laughs> I'm thinking about whenever I've been in a, a a class that didn't have a syllabus or a grading rubric or whatever. I'm like I don't know what this teacher is grading on. Like right. I don't know what the what's expected of me. And so I think lacking a uh, a consistent framework even mm -hmm. to know like, okay, so what stuff should I be focusing on? And just, just kind of looking at like, you know, gauging by people around me to see like, what do they value? And am I valuing the right things and stuff? Yes. So I think like, as we have started to like more holistically define what spiritual health and maturity looks like, that starts to give um, more awareness. Yeah. You know, even just having it laid out there, that'd be another thing I'd add. Yeah. I think you guys nailed it. I don't think I have anything to add that would be like why people don't enjoy assessing themselves. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think the honest, yeah, just the honesty aspect of having to lay it before the Lord and truly look at ourselves in the like the mm -hmm. the way that the Lord would see us yeah. in that too. I, don't I think know. there might also be some like so uh, this uh, the in portion of this the um, the reflect garden and grow like. We've we've talked about how they're very tied to emotional health, mm -hmm. right? Emotional intelligence. Yes. And like, um, I remember uh, somewhere along the, in this journey, just reading some articles about how emotional health has been like sorely lacking um, in the discipleship process for yes. uh, for Christians for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the ability to sit and like deal with the uncomfortable emotions of like not measuring up on something, it's like I think a lot of times we're prone to when are we evaluate. We are either proud, like arrogant, mm. like we think we're doing a really good job at mm -hmm. something, or we end up slipping into despair, like we yeah. think that we're terrible at everything. And so to be able to have the, the emotional health to be able to process with the Lord, like, hey, I, I am loved and cherished and valued by you, not based on my performance. Mm -hmm. And here's how my performance is doing. And I want to <laughs> rise to the challenge. I don't know. That's not well-formed, but that's kind of something I'm thinking through. It's good. Yeah, you, you, you're right. Um and so, so then there, as you said, you use the word rubric, like there's, there's not a way for me to understand, like, what does God expect? Mm -hmm. You have your opinion. Stephanie has her opinion. Right. Somebody else has their opinion. I don't know. I think I'm doing pretty mm -hmm. good uh, without that consistent, mm -hmm. comprehensive, holistic right. approach to this is what God expects. Mm -hmm. And then that willingness to go there. It's, it is easier just, hey, check the box. I did it. You right. know, leave me alone. Who are you to judge me? So we, we get into that uh, aspect mm -hmm. of, of defensiveness. And so, so mm -hmm. I, I think we're there uh, in, in yeah. discussing why, yeah. Yeah. why people aren't willing yeah. to go there. So what would you throw in? So thinking about 
because a, a question that consistently comes up in this realm is like, how does it avoid just box checking? How does it mm-hmm. avoid just being the, like, I did my religious duty. We create a new law for people. Like, yeah. how do you, how do you process and respond to that? Or for someone who's kind of in that headspace, what are you, what are you thinking through? The, the discovery we made two years ago of two fruit through practices yeah. of making sure that whenever we're talking about being a disciple of Jesus, it comes back to the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, mm-hmm. shaping us into mm-hmm. our Savior's image, his character and who yeah. he was. And so the win is yeah. fruit, just like every good farmer knows, you know, the win is the harvest. There's a lot of work that's going to go into it, mm-hmm. uh, but all that stuff we do and the dependence on creation and what God has, God provides for a harvest is that we, we recognize, hey, that is the win. Not the check the boxes, look at me, aren't I impressive? Instead, positioning ourselves to see a work of the Spirit shaping us into the image of Jesus. So two fruit has been a really big deal. And as we think about providing tools and guidance and how do we guide people along this path, we are regularly talking about how do we keep the identity of Jesus in front of us? Mm-hmm. How do we keep that yeah. work of the Spirit, like who God shapes us to be in front of us? Because that is the goal. Now, there's a journey to get there. And so now there are some things to do. And as mm-hmm. long as we keep the to-dos yeah, <laughs> framed right, right. up by the who we are becoming by the grace of God, right. then we can do as an act of obedience and surrender in walking with our Lord in joy of discovering mm-hmm. this life that he has given us, as long as we remember he's the one shaping us and bringing us into right. this mm-hmm. fruit of what he is doing yeah. through the Holy Spirit in us. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I love that. So list the nine. Yes. And categorize them up, out, in. Yes. There it is. I was like, you got it. Think. I was like, wait. I'm going to flip him. Yeah, for for up, regarding love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, we use three practices there, worship, hear, and pray. And when you look at the historical spiritual disciplines, you will see uh, Mm -hmm. public and private worship. Like Mm -hmm. we we recognize that as important. Under here, you will will see (laughs) Bible study, Mm -hmm. you know, scripture reading, scripture memorization, scripture meditation of the historical Mm -hmm. practices of the church. You see engagement with God's word. It Mm -hmm. is imperative. And then pray like a conversation with God. And so same kind of thing, uh, at, you know, practices of solitude, getting alone mm-hmm. with God, uh, the conversation, uh, supplication, these these varied spiritual disciplines that all tie to pray. So worship, mm-hmm. hear, and pray are the three primary ones that position us in our relationship yeah. to God. I was just going to say, why did you choose hear over read? Oh, so good. Uh, when... W- Read is very much uh, attuned to or aligned to a literate mm-hmm. culture uh, when we think, oh, I'm going to read my Bible, and yet we we look in I- historically mm-hmm. oral cultures right, right. and mm-hmm. and very – so what we want to do is hear from God. Uh, hear, O Israel, the Lord mm-hmm. our God is yeah. one. He who has ears, let him hear. Mm-hmm. We see a consistent message of us hearing from God. Yeah. Whether I read it on a page or heard it audibly, yeah. I, I desire to hear from the Lord. It's good. It, it's kind of interesting too. Like it actually almost takes the reading a step further because it's like mm-hmm. not just did I get through the two chapters today, but like the focus is on like I need to hear from the Lord. Yeah, yes. yeah. So good, so yeah. good. We, and, and yeah, one of the great ways that that we're trying to keep it from just a box check. Yeah. Right. I read thirteen verses. Isn't <laughs> yeah, that yeah. enough? You know. Yeah. No. Did you hear from God? Did yeah. you hear mm-hmm. from Him? I love that. So on up, worship here, pray. Of those that are out, we would use the word serve, connect, and invite. Mm -hmm. Uh, By serve, those are acts of of love, kindness, serving those, opening a door. Uh, It it can be varied. Everyone deserves to be served. They are made in the image of God. We follow Jesus Mm -hmm. as he served us. We serve others. I love how that is... Also, I'm just buttoning in here, but I love how that's like, it's not just... so. Serving at church is right. a great way that you can do that, mm-hmm. and it's not the sum total of what it looks like to live right. the life of a servant. Like the Son of God came uh, not to be served, but to serve, yes. and that, that wasn't that he volunteered on his church team, you know, <laughs> once a week. Um, how do you think about that as like daily service versus like being on a ministry team, that kind of thing? Yeah, I love what you just said in that Jesus served people who were opposed to him yeah. and mm-hmm. were missing it yeah. and were selfish and he washed Judas' t- yes. feet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so if we just if we just think 
oh, okay, I, I served at church. I done good. Yeah, you know, check that box. I did yeah. it. Mm. It's like, no, it's so much more than that. Yeah. It is. It is. So, yeah, broadening that out and recognizing we we serve in the little things and mm-hmm. the big things mm-hmm. at home, at work, out there, and at church. Yes. Uh, but yes, broadening out what we understand serving is. Yeah, it seems almost like that serving on a ministry team at church. So, one, it is a way to serve uh, using your spiritual gifts. It's a way to yeah. serve where you're needed. And we serve in the family first. It's like that all makes sense. Um, and in some ways, it's almost like a, a gateway into a life of service, right? It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a first step into that of like, okay, I don't know what it looks like for me to have a heart of service all the time, but I'm going to take a first step by getting on this team. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and as we, we've, we've said it, it keeps us away from, Hey, I checked that box. Right. I'm yeah. good for the week. No, no, it is a daily yeah. uh, attitude mm-hmm. mindset, mm-hmm. looking for the little things, the big ways that, that we can serve mm-hmm. other people. So serve is the first connect. And by connect, we mean genuine relationship, yeah. in this case, with other mm-hmm. believers. Mm-hmm. So I have people in my life who know me, like mm-hmm. they really know me. They know when I walk in the door, if I'm having a bad day, mm-hmm. they know if mm-hmm. I'm kind of uh, making light of a real struggle mm-hmm. in my life and they call me out on that. I have people that I confess my sins with. I am in genuine community to be connected in the same way we choose this concept Mm -hmm. recognizing, hey, it's not enough just to show up Mm -hmm. at a class or a Mm -hmm. small group or be in a smaller room than the worship center. Like We're talking about real connectedness. Mm -hmm. As we hear from God, here I have genuine connection with other believers who are taking the same journey of following Jesus with me. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, so you you just this last weekend, um, which I guess that doesn't line up with when this podcast is going to release. So recently, <laughs> <Yeah>. you, <laughs> recently you just talked about that the VCR, the um, the validating emotions, and then comforting, or used a different word, I think a different C, um, but that th- like it, to attune to another person's emotions. Yes, right. Um, would you tie that into connect as well? Is that like when are we talking about connection? We're talking about people that we rejoice with them whenever they're rejoicing, yes. we mm-hmm. mourn with them whenever they're mourning. So it's partially like attuning to one another's emotions. Absolutely. There there need to be people in in my life that know me well. I know them well. Mm-hmm. And I am I am focused. I've made margin in my schedule to give time to where I, I sense mm-hmm. when they are grieving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can, as you said, come alongside and validate yeah. like, hey, Nathan, um, what's going on? Because I can see in you. Yeah. And, and I have that same thing from you because you know when I yeah. walk in the room something's off and then you and I have a really good relationship so we feel when yeah. things just are a little bit off yeah. and so I, we, we can validate hey here's what's going on and then I, I use the word celebrate yeah okay that's right. now let's celebrate God's grace in in what he has provided mm-hmm. in that so y- yes that's an excellent example of genuine community mm-hmm. um, and where where we have that with each lo- we with each other we need to be connected mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. way that's good. So serve, connect, and then the third one is invite. This one excites me. Why does this one excite you? Jump in. Because I think a lot of people just view invite as inviting them to church. And this is more or less like the, no, come with me on Mm -hmm. this journey as I follow Jesus. And so that one excites me the most because it's not just stuck to bringing them to a church service. It's like, no, come with me and watch me and like do this with me. So that one excites me the most. Me too. And I think it's part, uh, it, it is a lot of times it's like, hey, we think that our responsibility is like, invite the person to church and then my church is going to disciple them. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's not the way it works. That's right. not the way of Jesus. It's not, it's not that churches ma- do the discipling. It's not that an app does the discipling. Right. It's that disciples make disciples. Right. And like, you don't have to be like at the end of your journey. You don't have to be super mature to be able to invite someone to take a step yes. that you've already taken. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yeah. it just doesn't stop within the church walls. Yeah. Like, People just assume that you're bringing them into this building, like you mm-hmm. were saying, that the church is going to make the disciple. And mm-hmm. it's, no, come with me on this journey. Yeah. That's and good. so that's why. And what a gift it will be as our people uh, begin to get confident with, hey, I'm not just inviting my friend to come to church so the preacher will share the gospel right. and he gets saved. Mm-hmm. I'm not just bringing my kids or my friends to church so somebody else will disciple them because I have no idea how to disciple mm-hmm. them. How beautiful it is and will be as people gain confidence in inviting people to come with yeah. them mm-hmm. in that you do have something to share. Yeah. As you take one step 
in following Jesus, you have a new learning, a new discovery, a mm-hmm. new experience to share with someone around you. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this whole invite um, grabs both traditional evangelism, yep. like share your faith with somebody who does not yet have it, and traditional discipling in yeah. that, hey, you're going to coach, mentor someone along the way. And it really just boils down right. to helping someone take their next just, step. Just yeah. their next step. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have all the answers, that's totally okay. Like yes. there's a bunch mm-hmm. of people who would love to help you with those yeah. answers, questions. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Both. Both. Answers to those questions. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that works. So yes, in, invite really excites me as well as it, it really um, decentralizes and, mm-hmm. and sends the church out on yes. mission to, to invite yes. people to come yeah. and see. Because yeah. could you imagine if everybody within Cornerstone who walked in through these doors Ooh. assumed that you were the one who was to make the disciple? Oh, Ooh. that sounds horrible. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next three, this is your favorite favorite, right? It, it is. Now, now, first of all, that, that gives away what most people <laughs> don't know is that I'm an introvert. Yeah. I really enjoy that quiet reflection, introspection uh-huh. thing. So I enjoy what I do. I love right. teaching God's word. I love, you know, casting vision and sharing where God is leading us. I love that part. And then I want to get away yeah. right. <laughs> and go think again. Yes. So it is my favorite part, partially by personality. And then this, this is a special aspect of ministry, of discipling that I really sense the Lord gave me, mm-hmm. you know, all the way back to that, you know, self-assessment, self-discipline, mm-hmm. self-development. Um, and so these in, as you love yourself, uh, we use the words reflect, mm-hmm. guard, and grow. Mm-hmm. By reflect, it's that self-assessment. I understand. I'm aware. I reflect on in the moment. Why did that trigger me? Right. You know, why did that anger me? Mm-hmm. Why did that tempt me? Like what? And then secondly, guard. What are what are the guardrails mm-hmm. that I've placed in my life to keep me out of a compromising situation? Mm-hmm. We all know someone who was who was doing so well and then fell into sin and destruction and hurt a family, a church, themselves. Uh, so what what am I doing to mm-hmm. set up healthy guardrails in all aspects of life yeah. to help me stay on that path and then grow? What am I doing to develop the gifts that God has given me? Yeah. Like those gifts, you know, we, we for a long time talked about shape. We use mm-hmm. that acronym, those yep. spiritual gifts, those passions, mm-hmm. those abilities, my personality, my experiences. What am I doing mm-hmm. to use what God has given me? And what am I doing to develop it so I'll keep doing better? Like in the list of spiritual gifts in scripture, um, there is a clear sense of use it mm-hmm. to the one yep. who has been given Use it. Mm -hmm. And as you use it, you develop it and you get better and better and better at what Mm -hmm. you do. Um, Stephanie, I'm catching myself getting a little bit excited. I know, but this is why I wanted to hear it. For Pete's sake. (laughs) This is your passion. It is. So you went from a list of 20 practices down to nine. Is that correct? Yes. Did I hear that right? Yeah. And it's like, it's more synthesizing. So it's not like, mm-hmm. hey, that one's not important. Right. Or whatever, it's but got... it's mostly combining, seeing things. It's like, oh yeah, like so- silence and solitude that, that falls under yes. reflect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And meditation falls under here. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. So taking... 20 historical spiritual disciplines. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll see them in like Richard Foster's yep. Celebration of Disciplines and other books mm-hmm. where you'll have a longer list. And as you said, Nathan, yep. to synthesize, to to combine uh, in a way that we bring those together and just like here, mm-hmm. uh, scripture reading, scripture mem- t- mm-hmm. memorization, scripture study, those things, bringing those together uh, in those nine practices that represent loving God. So we love others as we love ourselves. I mm-hmm. love that. Okay. Last question for you. Ooh. Then I'll let you go, I guess. <laughs> I guess. But what are you most excited about with follow? Hmm. <laughs> it's a lot. Wow. Um, I would say I'm most excited about bringing back the primary function of the church being making disciples. Mm-hmm. And, and it, this has just been in the last few months that I realized, wow, Jesus said, I will build my church mm. and nothing will stop it. So mm-hmm. Jesus promised he is the one mm-hmm. building his church. And then he told his disciples, you go make disciples. Right. And, and the really convicting piece is that many guys who sit in my seat as a pastor of a church, uh, what we're focused on is building churches. And if we have enough time, 
will staff for or, you know, hire for or have a, a program to make disciples. But my primary job is to grow a church right. and make sure it's healthy right. and all the aspects of, of a church are there. And what I'm most excited about is saying to pastors is saying, wait a minute, didn't Jesus say mm-hmm. he would right. take care of that? and we're to go make disciples, and to hand that baton back over to every follower of Jesus to say, hey, that one's for all of us, not not for them to right. bring their friends to the church so I can disciple them. Instead, we get to equip them to be able to make disciples. So to restore to the church the primary goal, the primary function, the primary commandment to go make disciples it will be a game changer mm-hmm. to restore that as what we do. We make disciples. Yeah, two weeks ago, I think, is whenever you shared that with me. And the moment you said it, I was like, whoa, mm. like that's a game changer. Like, And then I saw your passion and your excitement. Like, I've heard you talk about follow. I've seen the excitement. I've seen yeah. the changes that it's made over the years and stuff like that. But right now, I couldn't be more excited mm-hmm. for you to be able to get it out there to others. And then also like you are wanting to help other churches in this. This is not just for yes. Cornerstone. This is for other churches. Um, and so I'm really excited to just see this tool yes. that God has been laying on your heart for 18 years to yes. come to life. Yes. And it, it really is, as we, as we talk about follow, it it is both a philosophy and as you've just said, uh, it we envision a tool that is actually being created right now that will actually help people do that uh, to help keep our focus on that, mm-hmm. to uh, help people do self-assessment where they can say, oh, yeah, I am doing that. I mm-hmm. am on the path toward uh, God bringing fruit through the Spirit's work in my life. So, yes, a, a philosophy that has has clicked in that, oh, yeah, the pieces are there. Mm-hmm. It, it is biblically uh, solid and faithful mm-hmm. to the priorities that yeah. Jesus gave us, and it provides a historically um, guided, comprehensive yep. understanding of what following Jesus looks yep. like. What are the practices that we yep. do? It it recognizes the wisdom of 2,000 years of people following Jesus and bringing those key learnings together as a philosophy. Okay, so here's how mm-hmm. we make disciples. And then, as, as you said, a tool that we're creating that will come alongside and help people mentor others, follow in the way of Jesus, and discover, oh, okay, I'm that's I'm on the right mm-hmm. path. Oh, look what God is doing yeah. to take it away from box checking and instead support them in their journey. That's awesome. How exciting. Man, I'm I'm just like yeah, I'm energized again just sitting here talking about this mm-hmm. with you. Um, yes, me too. I think about like I've been in discipling relationships with people before where it was a lot I mean, we did it was good. It was like God brought fruit out of it and like um but it was I spent a lot of time like I don't really know what to do next with them. It's like Let's read the Bible. Let's talk about any yeah. like sin that maybe has popped up in the last week. Let's pray for each other. Okay, I don't really know what's next. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And so it's like to have a, a, a better framework and a tool, it's like that's really exciting to me because I, I love being in that space of helping someone mm-hmm. else. Um, and I think there's a lot of people who are listening to this today who God's going to use in that way in the future. Yes. Oh, so absolutely. So for us to be able to – for them to have a tool in their hands to say like, okay, now I know how to do this. I'm I'm willing. Put me in, coach. Just tell me what play we're yeah. running. You know, um, right. so I'm excited about that. So, anything else? No, is that that covers it, right? I believe have... it does. Okay. Thank you, guys. I hope this has been a fun special episode for you. And uh, man, w- we are. Whenever we think about this, this isn't just a, a program that the church is running, but this is something that we're inviting you into yeah. as right. you are learning to be a disciple, um, exercising these these nine practices in your own life, as you're thinking about making disciples, like we, we want to, we want you along this journey with us. Um, yes. And then you can be praying for us too. Like as we're, there's still pieces of it. It's like, there's pieces of it that are really locked in and there's some pieces that we're still like <laughs> figuring out exactly how, how it pans out and how to implement it. And so be praying for us as we want to be partnering with Jesus Mm -hmm. as he's building his church. We want to make disciples. um, So be praying for us as well. 
thank you guys for were you gonna say something else yeah i was i was just gonna say and and hear us now say uh we we need some people who are willing to try Mm -hmm. uh and utilize a tool Mm -hmm. we know will have glitches and clunkiness and and we'll miss um, in providing yep. a tool, we we need some people who are willing to try it with with friends, yeah. uh, with someone you've been wanting to mentor mm-hmm. yep. uh, as a guide, knowing that at first uh, it's going to have a lot of bugs in yep. it. Right. You know, technologically, we're going to need to hear like, hey, this part kind of works, this one doesn't. Yeah, uh, we would love to invite you to to come along yep. with us as we develop this tool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so put very plainly, like we're working on an app that's yes, going to be yes. like something sitting on your smartphone that you yes. can use to like track your uh, track your habits and help someone else with that. So if you want to be in on the alpha testing round, we are recruiting for that like in the very near future. So send us an email, warehouse at pot, I'm sorry, warehouse at cornstone.team. There it is. <laughs> Woo! You did it. I did it, guys. You did it. <laughs> um, and say, I, like, I want to I wanna help alpha test it because we were looking for some people who are, are willing to are. give yeah, it a run. Yeah, and if you have more questions yeah. about it, like, we would love to help and answer any questions that you may have. Yeah. Okay. This has been a pleasure. Thank you for joining us, Michael. <laughs> My pleasure. This has been fun. Uh, yes, I get excited when I talk yeah. about uh, a, a, a coming yep. season. Yep. I've seen a lot of people come into the shape and the footsteps of Jesus, our yep. Lord. It's going to yeah. be, it's going to be fun. Love Thanks it. for joining us on the warehouse and yeah. taking a break from under the hood. Yes. No, he didn't take, <laughs> he a, didn't break. take a break. Well, I mean, He's but... still going to do that one. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for adding in an extra That's one. Right. <laughs> Well, hey, it's been good. I'm excited about this this next year and what what this journey is going to look like um, as we're as we're following Jesus together. So, this has been Warehouse. Until next time, Stephanie. We'll see you on the flippity flop. Oh, is that what we're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it works. You okay, can say bye. say bye, Nathan. Nope. No. Okay. See you guys. Well.